any minute now about the worst mass shooting in modern American history. Uh, another press conference by authorities is about to get underway. We're obviously going to bring that to you live. We learned a lot at the press conference last night. We hope to learn a lot more tonight as well. Uh, visited by President Trump today, of course. Uh, also tonight, uh, there was a questioning by the FBI of the killer's girlfriend, who is now back in the United States, and more. Yeah, with all of that, the killer, who is always we are not naming, remains a mystery. As we wait for the press conference, I want to quickly talk to CNN's Martin Savage about the latest in the investigation. Obviously, as soon as that press conference starts, we'll go right to it. Uh, Martin, a statement by the girlfriend uh, of this killer through her attorney. Yeah, you know, so much has been anticipated as to what she might say and tell the authorities and tell the public as to, you know, what may have motivated all of this horrible tragedy. But she says in a statement that she was just as shocked, just as horrified, just as surprised as everyone else. She now joins a long list of people who say there were no red flags, there was no indication, no warning sign that he was going to do what he did. She also said that she had been to getting... Let's go to the press conference. I'm sorry, Martin. So, um, thank you for being courteous with the mics this, this time. Uh, well, good evening. Um, obviously, I'm uh, Sheriff Joe Lombardo with Clark County. Um, this has been, this will be one of many press conferences we have provided uh, in order to provide the public information that is occurring. And then, so the sequence of these events tonight, um, I will provide you some, uh, can we get some help back there? I will provide you uh, a sequence of some updates of the investigation as we um, have moved forward since the last time we spoke to you. Um, any specifics or continuance of any global investigative leads um, that you need to be aware of. Um, Special Agent Aaron Rouse will provide those, um, that information associated with that. Okay, and then subsequently I will return to the podium, uh, assist with some Q&A and then um, Commissioner Sislak is available if you have any questions of the commissioner. And then obviously we have Senator Dean Heller um, who wish to address the audience also. So, um, President Trump, I think he was in town today. Um, yes, he was in town. And the reason why I bring up President Trump is nothing to do in fact, with President Trump, but to do with the police department. Um, there was some concern uh, because of his visit that investigations associated with this case would be delayed or hindered. And I'm here to assure you none of that occurred. Uh, there was a separation of personnel associated with first responders um, of the Harvest Festival event um, that took the opportunity to meet with Mr. Trump and he had the opportunity to congratulate them for the, their heroic acts. The investigators are directly related to this investigation, both on my department and the FBI, were not part of that. Um, so I, I want everybody assured um, there was no hindrance in continuance of the investigation. Um, return of property. There's a lot of questions going on with that, and I wish I could provide you um, answers with that. We will try to um, post on LVMPD.com um, when the soon as we can advise uh, victims uh, when they can receive their personal property. Uh, we are still evaluating the crime scene. Until that completes, um, the property phase will not occur. Um, so the best of my re understanding of where we're at, we're looking at four to five days. Um, so I know that sounds troublesome, uh, but it's important that we dot the I's and cross the T's as far as the evidentiary and possible prosecution in the future. Injuries. Injury number that we are using today, 489. Um, of that 489, 317 have been discharged from the hospital. So the question is, Sheriff, you provided several different numbers associated with that all the way up to 527. Now you gotta imagine um, we're dispersed across several hospitals. We're relying on internal communication of the hospitals to provide us accurate numbers. Uh, so that's ever changing. And additionally, hospitals receive patients outside of this event. Uh, so quite often, or hopefully not quite often, but often, 
some of those patients were double counted or they were misconstrued as event injuries versus other injuries such as car accidents. So today I'm comfortable in saying the injured number is 489. Deaths still remain at 59. I had told you 59 before, um, plus one being the suspect. Uh, that changed. Um, today it's 58, plus one, the suspect, 59. And it was the same reason uh, that occurred before, as I explained. So hope you understand that. Um, nobody wants that number to go up. And by the grace of God, it went down. Uh, so um, that's a good thing. So today I'll provide you some updates on our investigation of the mass shooting Sunday night at Route 91. More than 100 investigators have spent the last 72 hours combing through the life of 64-year-old Stephen Paddock to produce a profile of someone I will call disturbed and dangerous. What we know is Stephen Paddock is a man who spent decades acquiring weapons and ammo and living a secret life, much of which will never be fully understood. He meticulously planned on the worst domestic attack in United States history. As many of you already reported, Paddock rented a room at the Ogden Hotel in downtown Las Vegas. This has been confirmed, okay? Reasons that ran through Paddock's mind is unknown, but it was directly during the same time his life is beautiful. We have received recovered um, evidence from that location. We don't know if it is evidence, but we have recovered items um, and uh, video uh, evidence. And I don't want to, you know what, I'm using the wrong term. Evidence is not the term. We have recovered video from there to review uh, Mr. Paddock's actions while he was there. Now it's important for you to understand, this was not, the rooms were not rented by the Ogden. It was done through Airbnb. Uh, by a private owner unknown uh, to the Ogden. Um, so we have very great cooperation from the owners of Life is Beautiful and the Ogden, and they are in full cooperation. Okay, well, we have already spoken to many people who have contacted with Stephen Paddock at hotels and places he frequented. We still have more interviews to conduct. Since Monday, there have been many questions for us to release a timeline, and today we have one. I want to point out the information previously reported on the time of the first shot was based on a CAD report. That's a, our computer-aided dispatch. That's our, what we do for calls for service. So that report is dependent on who the per, you know a particular person calling in in that time stamp. But what we have done through the review of body-worn cameras, we are able to pull it back to um, previously from 10.08 to 10.05. Uh, so Carlos. So I'm gonna give you a, a chance to review that, take photographs of it, and I'll walk you through time, each timeline. So at 10.05, the first shot's fired by the suspect. This was seen on closed circuit television from the concert venue. 10.12, first two officers arrived on the 31st floor and announced that gunfire is coming from directly above them. 10.15, the last shots were fired from the suspect per body-worn camera. So if you're looking at the math, 10 minutes. 10.17, the first two officers arrive on the 32nd floor. 1018, security officer tells the LVMPD officers he was shot and gives the exact location of the suspect's room. Now you notice a minute uh, delta there. Um, before they broadcasted it, obviously they were in a conversation with the security guard immediately upon them exiting the elevators. Um, between 1026 and 1030, eight additional officers arrived on the 32nd floor and began to move systematically down the hallway, clearing each room and looking for any injured people. This they move this way because no longer hear the gunfire of the active shooter situation. 1055, eight officers arrived in the stairwell at the opposite end of the hallway nearest the suspect's room. So when I say nearest the suspect's room, you can imagine the doorway of the hotel room. This stairwell and this door access is approximately um, two to three feet away. 
1120, the first breach was set off and officers entered the suspect's room. They observed the suspect down on the ground and also saw a second door that could not be accessed from their position. So it's a suite and we have, there's, you have a main area of the suite, which is a living room, uh, uh, kitchen, dinette area. And then on opposite ends of that is two bedrooms. I'm sorry, where did I leave off? Somebody yell it out. 1120. Okay, so if you do the math on that, all the way up to 1120 from 1005, we're looking at 75 minutes. So um, the young lady here in the front with the red phone, you had mentioned 72 minutes. So now you, you see where those minutes came from, okay? At 1127, the second breach was set off, allowing officers to access the second room and no one was lo no one else was located within the um, the hotel room. Okay, these are following extenuating circumstances as to why we may appear that there was some delay or undue delay in reaching the suspects. Okay, the officers in the first strike team reached this 32nd floor within 12 minutes, which is phenomenal. Of the first shot being fired. When the officers arrived and confirmed the location of the suspect's room, the gunfire had stopped. In accordance with their training, officers retrieved a master key card from the injured security guard and began to systematically clear each hotel room. So imagine the elevated bank in the center, 150 um, feet down on a triplex hotel um, was the suspect's room. So there's several rooms along the way. Uh, they, uh, because of no firing was occurring, they could not hear additional firing. They believed it was important to evacuate in case the suspect was barricaded. 